But I'd like to open the next session, which is session three, FDI, financial development and competitiveness. And I'd like to, at this point, ask Dr. Devananan and Ms. Sharda Sardar Singh to join us at the head table. He's presenting this time work by himself and Dr. Darren Conrad, does a weak financial sector inhibit the benefits of FDI? Evidence from Guyana. Okay. Um, well, Dr. Mohammed helped me with the title of this, um, this particular paper. Um, this one is really near and dear to my heart. Eh? The well, the previous one as well. Um, but this one, because I'm really interested in this area of um, foreign direct investment, especially as it relates to, uh, to small economies and perhaps in some way mitigating the shortfalls, the constraints that, feel, that face um, small economies. This is current work with, with Dr. Conrad. Let me just give you the, the background here for a second. Eh? Again, like before, while FDI may be beneficial, right, according to literature, it is noted, um, it is theorized, and there's been empirical work done, that a well-developed financial sector is critical to experiencing benefits through spillovers and backward linkages. So again, the, you know, while we usually think about FDI as having all these benefits, but the literature is saying that a, a properly working, strong financial sector is imperative for us to realize those benefits. Now, there's a model by Hermes and Lensic. This is um, um, seminal work that um, says that you know, the financial sector is important, it's crucial, because it lowers the cost of financing. If you want to form um, spillovers, you want to have enable spillovers and backward linkages, you want to promote your your domestic economy. And again, the financial sector here lowers the cost of financing, gets them involved, um, lowers the risk of undertaking um, firm expansion, gets them involved. Um, and it also, a well-developed financial sector better manages flows. That's the purpose behind a well-developed financial sector. Mobilize savings, channel that to productive investment uh, within your economy. So you want to, the, the theoretical um, literature says that this thing is important to you. A matter of fact, empirical work that went on to study um, this type of relationship found something even more startling. They, they said that um, it, in countries that had a sufficiently strong financial sector, yes, indeed, the impact of FDI on economic development is positive. In other words, those countries gain um, from foreign direct investment. However, below a, a critical threshold, countries that had a weak financial sector, um, those countries actually experienced a negative effect of, of FDI. And uh, I, although I didn't include on the slide here, but they did, these are cross-country studies done in, with, in excess of 100 or so country, developing countries across the world. About half of those countries that they studied fell in the category of a weak financial sector, not strong enough in order to experience the beneficial impacts of FDI. And so what that suggests is that you need to have a, a very well-developed financial sector, and that's not an easy thing to achieve in order for you to even benefit from FDI. Policy advice, why is this important? Well, these, um, if you believe these, these studies, then it suggests that you first, before we start promoting FDI, if that is really true, if you, before you start promoting FDI within your country, you first need to develop the financial sector. If you don't, if it's weak, if it's, um, it's not well developed, then you're not really going to experience the benefits that you think may be accruing from, from FDI. Now, we contend in this paper here that uh, the cross-country evidence is open to some interpretation, and that interpretation given by the literature um, may not necessarily be accurate. It may or may not be. In a cross-country setting, countries with a poorly developed financial sector might also have poor developmental strategies in general. And so it may not be the fact, it may not be that FDI is not beneficial in those economies because of the financial sector. It may be because of these other policies that may or may not go along, um, these, uh, or the lack of develop appropriate development policy, that may be what is spurring the negative effect that you see with FDI, not necessarily the financial sector. Um, and so to the extent that these other factors matter, cross-country studies may overstate how strong the financial sector needs to be before you actually experience some benefit uh, from FDI. It's certainly possible, um, then, if you believe this version of the story, that in a country with an initially poor financial sector that also undertakes reform aimed at promoting financial sector development um, may also experience uh, the benefits of FDI. In other words, you don't need a, a stronger financial sector, but what may be important is that along with promoting FDI, you promote financial sector development so that you enhance those spillovers and backward linkages. Well, this is really the, the, what we are looking at in this paper, and I'll talk about that in a second a bit more. But this question of how strong 
does the financial sector need to be before you experience benefits from FDI? It's a critical question. Um, if it is indeed, uh, uh, you need to have it sufficiently strong, it's a precondition. In other words, any strategies that promote FDI in the absence of a good financial sector might be misplaced. You might be dampening growth according to these empirical studies. Right? Um, on the other hand, uh, if the benefits do accrue in the case of a poorly developed financial sector in which governments also improve that sector, then what it means is that yes, you should, as a developing country, you should be promoting FDI, but along with that, you need to, to have a suite of policies that are involved, um, particularly in case of financial reforms uh, that accompany um, FDI policy. So in other words, you shouldn't just be promoting FDI, but um, you should also be promoting financial sector development, and certainly you should not let um, the financial development be a barrier to, to, um, to promoting FDI. This is a particularly relevant case for, for small and developing states. There's a large thought within um, these countries that you need some type of economic activity before you promote financial sector development. Without FDI and the, 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 in, um, the economic activity that it brings, it's very difficult to, to, to have um, financial sector development, and so that's a, a very burdensome task to do. Innovation in this paper, we look at the case of Guyana, and I'm going to tell you, Guyana is really interesting for several reasons. Uh, let me just give you a bit of the history of Guyana. In the mid-70s, Guyana's, um, uh, many of the industries focused on the primary commodity market. Mid-1970s, things are going well. Primary commodity, they're, they're, they're getting a good return um, there, and Gu the Guyanese government at that time moved to nationalize many enterprises, perhaps in the hope of, of capturing uh, more profits from these organizations. By the late 1970s, um, commodity markets, had, uh, there was a fallout there, commodity prices um, fell rapidly, and by that time, these, um, these, these state enterprises were bringing much less money, in part due to the lower prices, but also because of inefficiencies. And these things now came under state control, um, and, and there were certain inefficiencies that arose um, because of that. Early 80s, 1980s, because of the deep financial economic turmoil that, um, as a result of the drop in commodity prices, uh, the government today started privatizing state enterprises, in other words, selling them out, right? So they're, they're reversing the trend of the, the mid-1970s, and then that trend continued throughout the 80s and beyond to the current day, um, alongside policies that promote FDI. Um, I would note with the, within here, there was an economic recovery program that addressed um, monetary um, reform, financial sector reform, as well as promoting FDI. So Guyana is a really good example um, for us to study whether these things work, because they've gone from, from being more controlled to freeing the market, um, privatizing, promoting FDI, engaging in financial sector reform. And what's noteworthy in the case of Guyana is that up to today, Guyana's financial sector is still one of the weaker um, sectors, financial sectors around in the region, particularly because of um, money leaving that economy in different ways. So this is what we're going to assess. We're gonna, um, what we want to look at is whether FDI is beneficial and what the role of the financial sector in Guyana has been in enhancing, whether or not it has been enhancing the impact of FDI, albeit within the context of a weak financial sector. So I, I know my time is limited here, but I'll, this is the model. The model um, follows very closely to a paper by Ang 2008, who studies the case of Malaysia in a different context, but Malaysia as well. What we have here in the economic model, G represents real GDP per capita. FDI is real foreign direct investment inflows per capita. F is a composite index um, of financial development formed from four commonly used measures of financial development. We're using um, principal components analysis here to better capture the financial environment and changes in that financial environment. And um, what you notice here as well is that we have FDI multiplied by financial development. That's the term that we, we're also very interested. If that term is positive, it suggests that um, the financial sector is enhancing the impact of FDI. Data taken from world development indicators, we include some dummies that correspond to, to, to salient features within those economies. Three-step process, very quickly. Um, in, as with any time series methodology, we're going to assess stationarity properties of the data. Um, that has implications for what type of methodology you use. Um, we're going to determine co-integration if variables are appropriately integrated. And then we, we want to assess long-run versus um, short-run causal linkages um, in the variables of interest. We're going to use uh, one of the innovations of this paper is that we use two types of framework um, to examine this issue, both the traditional Johansson approach as well as uh, the more novel, more recent ARDL bound testing approach to co-integration and estimating the long-run relationship. 
Very quickly, within the VECM framework here, what we have, you know, I mentioned we have four variables in our model. That corresponds, within a VEC methodology, corresponds to four different equations. What you notice here is that there's an error correction term which is normalized on economic development. That corresponds to long-run relationship. The lag difference terms correspond to, to short-run relationships. In the case of the ARDL, it's a single equation setup. Um, similar, um, we have the error correction term corresponding to long-run relationships, and um, the lag difference term is short-run relationships. For brevity here, because I know my time is almost up, all variables are I1. We use the ADF and PP test to determine, um, to, to examine stationarity, all I1. Both the Johansson and the ARDL bounds test showed evidence of one co-integrating relationship. So in, in other words, um, these variables are related in the long run. Um, so there's something going on there in the long run um, between or among these variables and um, of course the diagnostics <laughs> We, um, we spent some quite some time making sure that diagnostics held for the relevant model. Straight, straight to the results now, right? So this is the result from the VECM as well as the ERDL. And what I want to highlight here is that the FDI coefficient is negative. The financial development coefficient here is also negative. Um, but the only positive guy in this whole thing is really the interaction too. And that is consistent across um, uh, both specifications, both the ERDL as well as the VECM. So what does that mean? So again, I mentioned the coefficient on FDI negative. Why? Well, if you think back to Guyana for a second and, and the type of FDI that they have been attracting is primarily concentrated in the natural resource sector. And natural resource sector, particularly forestry and mining, um, it means it's possible within, uh, because of the type of FDI that they, they're attracting, it has negative implications through environmental consequences and corruption. Indirect effect, which is interaction term, we see that's positive. So in line with the literature, we find that the effect is, um, is being enhanced by even though the financial sector is weak. And we also find that the financial sector impact outside of FDI is negative, meaning that the financial sector is not necessarily contributing to long-run economic development. So overall, our takeaway from here is that while our, our, the form of our relationship fits in literature, but what we find is that you don't need a strong financial sector in order for you to experience the net positive benefits. Guyana is experiencing the net positive benefits according to our specification here. And we also find that that, that financial sector development enhances that effect. It's critical to um, experiencing the benefits. But notably, this does not occur at, at, at a very strong financial sector. It's occurring within the context of a weak financial sector. This has implications for, for other countries. Um, the major implication is that you should be promoting FDI along with financial sector development in order to experience the benefits. In all, last point, and I know my time is up, um, the implications for the local context. I'll give you some sense of the history. We, uh, Guyana, uh, when through privatizing uh, the, the state, it brought many of these entities under state control. They moved from that to privatizing, opening up to foreign direct investment, um, and then they also enacted um, financial development policies. Um, that has context for how we mitigate um, the inefficiencies uh, for state control enterprises and how we bring them under um, some, bring them more uh, in, on a more productive stream within the economy. My time is up. Thank you very much.